Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one. No, scratch that, hope you're all having a great one. And welcome back to A Game of Throws in World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles. Couple of disclaimers before we get started. First, I'm very happy to be able to say that this episode is sponsored by Curiosity Stream. Uh, more on that later, don't worry, there's going to be some quiet moments during the course of this battle where we will have the opportunity to look at some documentary footage of warships. Uh, courtesy of Curiosity Stream, uh, because, well, second disclaimer, not only is this an episode of Game of Thrones, but it's also on the Asia server, so um, <laughs> I'm sorry, Asia server, uh, your reputation does kind of precede you here. Third and final disclaimer, uh, this is Polymorphine, by the way, in the Tier 10, well, technically they call it the Vampire 2, it's actually HMAS Vampire from the Royal Australian Navy, Kind of appropriate, we are on the Asia server. And uh, polymorphine... Look, there's no point in trying to sugarcoat this, I may as well get this out of the way right now before you all savage him for it in the comments. Some of the decisions that he makes aren't the best. But he is going to make one fairly critical error of judgement that could easily have ended up costing him his ship. And you could certainly make the convincing argument based on the way this game is going to play out that he is being way too cautious at certain points for somebody whose team are losing as badly as they are going to be although in his defense one this is the asia server and they're notorious for playing their carriers here and he's in a destroyer with a very short duration smokescreen so his caution is understandable now, I know at this point that many of you have already looked at the top of the screen and first noted, yep, it's another bugged replay, you can only actually see his team lineup. But I've enabled the team lineups at the sides of the screen as well, and yeah, there's only one carrier. What are you talking about? The air threat isn't that bad? Well, is there really only one carrier? Because I know Wargaming made a big song and dance after everybody revolted about the carriers right after the carrier rework and said, okay, okay, we won't put ever more than two carriers per team per battle. But then they sneaked the uh, the hybrid battleship carriers in under the table, didn't they? Yeah. And if you were looking at the team list at the start, you will see that not only does Polymorphine's team have a Securiu, which is a tier 11 carrier, they've also got a Delaware, which is a hybrid battleship carrier. And it's even worse news on the enemy team, because they've got a USS USA, another tier 11 carrier, but they also have... Two Delawares! <laughs> there are five carriers in this battle. And then to make matters worse, Polymorphine's team doesn't have any radar, and the enemy team have two. Well, at least two. They've got the Alexander Nevsky and the Yu Yang, which may or may not have radar. But either way, Polymorphine's team don't have any. So given that combination of factors, the fact that the Alexander Nevsky is up here and he's in a position to cover that cap circle with his radar, given the massive air threat, you'll note that he is having none of that whatsoever. He's very, very carefully not giving his position away by turning his AA guns off. Also, given the fact that the team's tier 11 destroyer, the Yamagiri, has just gotten smashed while attempting to probe a cap and getting spotted from the air and probably radar as well by the enemy. Oh yeah, the enemy have three radar. There's a Worcester. <laughs> it is entirely understandable that Polymorphine is being extremely cautious about pushing this cap circle. He's still going to make a fairly big mistake later, and feel free to have a go at him for that, but right now this caution is completely understandable. Oh, and the, I don't even know what ship that is. It's one of the three enemy destroyers, the Kunming. Sounds a bit Pan-Asian. Um, has just sunk the team's Masashi, so they're now down one destroyer and one battleship, and trust me, things are going to get a lot worse before they start getting any better. The only good news right now is that, well, the Nevsky's fallen back. He knows where the Yugamo is, it's up there to the north. He knows where the Yu Yang was, it was over towards the middle of the map. No idea where the Kunming is, and oh, hang on a second, the team have just lost their Paolo Emilio. How did that happen? Excellent question. In order to answer that one, I'm just going to have to rewind things a little. And then we're going to focus on the minimap. And I do hope you're all strapped in because, well, you're going to need to see it to believe it. There he is. How the hell did he get all the way up there unspotted? Well, it's the Asia server. <laughs> he basically just drove straight up the middle of the map, straight into the cap circle at Bravo. 
and is now flipping it. Although he's probably not going to be allowed to flip it because there is a Worcester there. And the Worcester is probably going to turn right after finishing off the Yamagiri and start radaring that cap circle. But well done, Paolo Emilio. How did he manage to get there without being detected? Well, it's the Asia server, the entire enemy team. And let me remind you, these geniuses are winning right now. But the entire enemy team has basically split left and right and they've left the entire middle of the map wide open. So the Paolo Emilio took advantage of it. Kunming has just sunk the Masashi. The Paolo Emilio, however, well, if he was going to attempt to flip the cap, he's been forced to abandon that because the Yugamo has just surface detected him, as has the USS USS's dive bombers. But it's a Paolo Emilio. It's got a high-speed smoke. It's also extremely fast. With the engine boost running, it will easily exceed 55 knots, and it has a high-speed smoke to allow it to stay undetected while doing that kind of speed, and has a huge bunch of short-range but extremely dangerous torpedoes, and he's dead. Smashed by the St. Vincent. But he got those guaranteed-to-kill-anything torpedoes away, and the only thing that he achieved was to get himself killed, put the enemy team three kills up, and fail to kill the carrier. It was one of those YOLO Emilio suicide runs that would have been glorious if it had worked, but it didn't. So he tried to soar with the eagles, and he just ended up gobbling with the turkeys. So while you're trying to wrap your head around that disaster that just left uh, Polymorphine's team three kills down for nothing, it's time for a word from our sponsors. This footage, courtesy of Curiosity Stream's Machinery of War documentary series, because honestly I've just given up with stuff like the Discovery Channel and the History Channel. The, there used to be a time when you can actually watch historical documentaries on those channels. At least as long as you were prepared to filter out all of the ones that were just thinly veiled advertisements for whichever defence contractor was sponsoring that particular documentary, but even those days are long gone and now it's all just reality TV shows. On Curiosity Stream, however, you do actually get what you pay for. They have thousands of documentaries available on subjects from, well, military history, science and technology, space exploration, cooking, you name it, it's there. They've got new stuff arriving every week. And with plans starting from less than $5 a month, it won't cost you a fortune either. In fact, it will cost you even less than that if you take advantage of today's offer. Click the link in the video description to go to curiositystream.com slash mightyjingles or just scan the QR code appearing on screen right now. Use the promo code mightyjingles and get yourself a 25% discount. I hope you enjoy their shows. I know I certainly am. And now back to my show and Polymorphine has finally judge that it is safe enough to enter the cap circle. And it is about damn time because they're three kills, 300 points, and one cap circle behind. He may have left it a bit late, but honestly, I mean, it definitely wasn't safe to do so before now, and it might not even be that safe now with three carriers in play. And speaking of which, there's the USS USA, spotted, one-shot kill, nobody shooting at it. <laughs> And it wasn't visible for very long, Jingles. We don't know how long it was visible before Polymorphine flipped the camera around to look at it. But okay, I'll give you that one. Don't worry. There will be more opportunities. Opportunities that nobody on his team is going to take. I mean, you'd think the carrier, you know, the actual carrier, the security would be going for it. But it, apparently he's got better things to do right now. Apparently that's true of all three of the enemy carriers because Polymorphine's been allowed to successfully flip this cap circle. There it is. Completely unopposed, too. Polymorphine's team just went up to above 200 points for the first time in, well, quite some time. Oh look, the USS USA has been spotted again. And oh look, absolutely nobody's doing anything about it. <laughs> Honestly, it's hard to say which team is trying to throw harder. Although at the moment, I think we have to go with Polymorphine's team. Come on, finish off the St. Vincent. Somebody get a kill. Somebody's trying, we'll give them that much, but nobody's doing. Okay, Polymorphine, respot the St. Vincent so somebody can kill it. And if that has to be you, then by all means. There it is. Come on, somebody. Oh, a little bit of brain fart in the recording there. Sorry about that. Not quite sure what happened. And yep, the St. Vincent is still not dead. Was down at 4,000 health. Now... Well, it's got a teal off, it's back up to 14,000 and more. And the USS USA is still not dead and still respotted. Speaking of which, Polymorphine just got himself air spotted. And while everybody should shoot at a destroyer the second it gets spotted, 
not everybody is, but at least one person is, and you know, that could have been a lot worse. Oh look, there's the St. Vincent that was on 4,000 health 40 seconds ago, now on 36,000 health. And yes, the USS USA has been air spotted, but this time it's by the carrier. The actual carrier. The Securio has gone for a torpedo attack on the enemy tier 11 carrier that's been on 1600 health. <laughs> And <laughs> finally got him, because <laughs> he only needed to land one torpedo. The carrier that's been on 1600 health, while being almost continuously spotted for the last forever, with nobody doing anything about it. But they finally got him. They finally inflicted the first casualty on the enemy team. After nearly 10 minutes of play, can we get a slow clap for Polymorphine's team? I mean, I'm not trying to diminish anything here. It was a good kill. It was a valuable, big kill. I mean, the USS United States is a very, very dangerous carrier, and now it's dead. This is a good thing. Of course, it should have been dead six minutes ago, but it's dead now, so we'll take it. But realistically, what have we actually achieved here? We've sunk the enemy carrier. Well, we haven't, though, have we? Because Wargaming do like to sneak those extra carriers in, bending the rules a bit in the shape of the battleship hybrids. So all we have realistically achieved while losing our Montana is to achieve carrier parity. Both teams now only have two carriers and Polymorphine's team are still 300 points and three kills behind. You can tell Polymorphine's thinking about those cap circles now. Oh, he's got an air spotted again. And yes, it was the other not carrier. <laughs> or one of the two other not carriers, the Delawares, of which the enemy team has two. To go with the potentially three radars that Polymorphine's team doesn't have. So your team have sunk the carrier, and it doesn't matter because you're still getting air spotted. Oh, there's a kill. There's a kill here. Yeah, there's the Yu Yang. He knows, he knows he's going to die. He has to get some shots off. Fantastic. Now, who else was paying attention when you got spotted by the Yu Yang and could possibly be shooting at you? Nobody. I'll tell you who else wasn't paying attention. The St. Vincent that was reduced to 4,000 health and then allowed to survive and get 36,000 health back. He's not paying attention because those torpedoes were launched some time ago. And in order for them to hit, that guy's been sailing the same course and speed for at least the last minute and a half. Ooh, there's another one of those not carriers, the Delaware. It's actually hiding in more or less the same spot where the USS USA was. All right, let us go for it. What's the reload like on the torpedoes? Uh, 35 seconds or so, this could be good. He's using the creeping smoke. That was basically when he got bum-rushed by the Yu Yang. He's not attempting to hide in the creeping smoke now. He's going for the carrier. Full speed, engine boost going, and... Yep, there he is. Now the range isn't great. I mean, he's inside shooting range, but it's going to take a long time to burn that. Th Don't forget, it is a battleship, right? It just happens to have a flight deck. It's going to take a long time to burn that thing down with destroyer caliber high explosive shells. And at that kind of range, it's going to take a miracle to score a torpedo hit. He's managed to set a fire. Actually, is that a double fire? It is a double fire. So that guy doesn't have fire prevention. You can tell by the pattern of the fires. Unfortunately, because Polymorphine slowed down here, he's now basically having to do his own spotting. So he's not going to be able to stay inside this smoke screen. He's going to have to go for it. Now, I want you to pay attention to what he does here. He's only got one torpedo launcher, and he aims it straight down the predicted torpedo track, the white line, which means that in order for those torpedoes to hit that Delaware, much like the torpedoes that hit the St. Vincent earlier, that guy is pretty much going to have to sail exactly the same course and speed while being attacked by a destroyer for the best part of a minute or more. One minute later. You know, I wanted to make some kind of smart-ass comment about the uh, Asia server, but honestly, we've seen just as bad on the North American and EU servers as well. Now, this isn't the mistake, because it is a mistake that Polymorphine makes. Yes, he's getting shot at by a Worcester. I mean, you could argue that it was a mistake, because he was kind of tunnel visioning on the Delaware, and the Worcester took advantage of that. But it's not a catastrophic error. He's managed to go undetected, and as long as those aircraft don't pick him up again, and he should be okay, he's turned his AA guns off again. Uh, he should be able to comfortably stay out of range of the Worcester. Meanwhile, the friendly St. Vincent actually managed to kill something. I mean, they're still one kill behind, but they're now only 100 points behind. Unfortunately, somebody is flipping one of their cap circles. 
I mean, there was a brief fight back there when the St. Vincent managed to get a kill, but now, I mean, he's trying to bow tank the Shikishima, but that's a Shikishima and you're a battlecruiser and you cannot bow tank it. But yeah, there he goes. Oh, well, it was a brave try, but now they're even further behind. And it's about here where Polymorphine is praying, somebody please take that Shikishima out, that he suddenly realises that he has screwed up in a really epic way because that Worcester is now eight kilometres away and has you raid on. Oh, good news, the St. Vincent did manage to set fires that finished the Shikishima off, but hooray. But yeah, for now, let's just focus on not dying because you got raid on at a range of eight kilometres from a Worcester. And without your engine boost, you're going to stay raid on for the entire duration of that consumable. That was entirely your own fault, Polymorphine. It's not like you didn't know the Worcester was there. You basically just took your eye off the ball. And, well, the Worcester is trying to take advantage of it, but a couple of things are going to keep Polymorphine in the game. One, the shockingly bad aim of the Worcester. And two, has he just run himself aground? <laughs> and now his radar's expired and somebody else is shooting at him. Okay, I mean, you know, the torpedoes are ready to go. You've got nothing else to shoot them at, I suppose. Uh, but I'm... I would be amazed. I mean, we've seen plenty of other ships sailing the same course at speed when there's destroyers around, but I would be astonished if that happens to the Worcester. I'm not saying it can't, because <laughs> I'm not quite that confident, but I would be very surprised. Now, in fact, what is going to kill the Worcester, and I did not see that coming when the Worcester appeared and radared him, what is going to kill the Worcester? You ready for this? Is polymorphine. <laughs> <laughs> with, I have to admit, a little help from his friends. And it's still not enough. I mean, the enemy team's lead has narrowed. They did have like 300 points, and now they're slightly more than 100 points ahead. But they've got three of the four cap circles, and while both teams are down to five ships apiece, actually, I don't know. I'd say maybe... I mean... I'm not confident enough to make a prediction based on what ships are left, but I think the edge definitely lies with Polymorphine's side because they do have an actual Tier 11 carrier and the enemy team does not. It's got another one of those Delawares, but it's only got one and it's all the way over the other end of the map. So this is probably the right time to sneak one of these cap circles, but is it? I don't think it's going to be enough. Let's stop and think about this for a minute, because as he's approaching the border of this cap circle, there's just slightly less than five minutes of the battle left. Both ships have... both ships? <laughs> Sorry, both teams have five ships. And assuming he's allowed to take this cap circle uncontested, both teams will have two cap circles. But in the time remaining, the enemy team only needs another 150 points. So even if Polymorphine, and it probably looks like he's going to, unless that enemy Illinois has anything to do with it, but let's just assume he's able to take this cap circle. If, even if he does, the enemy team are still going to win. If they kill anything in the next two minutes, they're guaranteed to win. If they don't kill anything, they just stay alive for the next two minutes, they're guaranteed to win because they only need... What's their point score now? Shit, they're nearly at 900 points. Flipping this cap isn't... it's, it's not going to be enough. You need to flip the cap, yes, or the enemy team are going to win in the next minute, but you need to flip the cap and you need to sink something. The carry was going after the Illinois, who was last spotted over there. There's the cap circle, so that's bought you some time, but you still don't have a lot. So what can you kill? Somebody needs to kill something. Your team must attack. You cannot just sit on these two cap circles and hope that the enemy team come to you. Are the enemy team... The enemy team are coming to you. <laughs> the team that are winning. <laughs> the team that doesn't have to do anything in order to win are doing things. They're trying to win harder. Oh, they got some airdrop torpedo. Unfortunately, look at this. That was what, four or five torpedo hits? Airdrop torpedoes. I mean, I give carriers a lot of shit, and they deserve it, but the airdrop torpedoes don't do a lot of damage. Imagine if that had been four or five Shimakaze torpedo hits. He'd be dead right now. That would be an X grosser curve. And it still might be if he continues attacking like that. Oh, there's the... Oh, wow, I'd forgotten the Yugamo was even in this battle. 
And the Kunming, we finally see it. Oh, the enemy team are up to 960 plus points. Somebody needs to die. <laughs> Any volunteers? The Delaware has come to his senses. He's turned around and he's getting the hell out of there. The Gross Occur first, on the other hand, with the enemy team at 977 points. I don't know if they can even kill him in time. The two destroyers, quick look at the minimap, they're running the hell away. Oh, great, they've come to their senses as well. They're switching their fight at the Delaware. I mean, he's on comparable health to the Grosser Kerr first, but he has weaker armour, so maybe... No, they're switching their fight at the Grosser Kerr. Oh, he's turned! Oh, they've got him! They've got him! The enemy team are at 993 points! They've got him! <laughs> Back down to 941. The Delaware is getting the hell out of there. He's burning, but he is not attacking. Can they finish him? I mean, maybe. I think that's the Smolensk shooting at him. And if anybody can burn him down, it'll be the Smolensk. But the Delaware just has to go undetected, and he will get away with it. Flipping this cap... I mean, I appreciate why Polymorphine is slipping into this cap circle. He's trying to chase down the Delaware, but his guns are never going to get the job done, and there's no way he's going to torpedo him. Taking this cap is only buying you time, but it is time that the team desperately needs with the enemy team back up to 965 points. They at least only have points coming in from one cap circle. Oh, and speaking of which, that would be cap circle alpha, where the Illinois was last seen quite some time ago. In fact, we last saw him dodge an aircraft right after Polymorphine's rather unlikely kill on the Worcester. Where is the Illinois? I mean, who exactly does he think he's defending cap circle alpha from? Where did he go? He's a very, very potent... I thought he might be trying to go for Bravo. But no, he's spent the last three minutes travelling nowhere. So he's basically where we saw him last. He's decided to make himself irrelevant. Polymorphine has flipped this cap, but with the enemy team at 985 points, the Delaware's gone undetected. And it's at this moment, with the enemy team 11 points away from winning, that the Yugamo decides to choose violence and attack the Smolensk in a gunfight. <laughs> And now Polymorphine's team are ahead on points, with seconds of the match remaining, and three of the cap circles. And even if the team had been trying to throw it and win harder at this point, there just isn't enough time left for them to do it. And so that is an incredibly unlikely win <laughs> for Polymorphine in HMAS Vampire. I don't think I really need to add anything to that, <laughs> other than maybe, welcome to the Asia server, <laughs> they do things differently here. Uh, honestly, they don't. I, we see stuff just as bad as this on all of the other servers. Uh, but uh, congratulations, Polymorphine, I guess. <laughs> I didn't see you winning that one, um, and yet you did, so well done. And I hope you all enjoyed it, because that's it for today. As always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.